Assortment Planning, Chapter 3, Session 4, Assortment Quantification and Clusters. As the buying team begins the process to quantify their buys, they would do this by using either a predefined wedge or they would tailor their buy to meet the customer demands. The wedge has been used for years. Stores would be clustered by total sales volume, allowing for faster buying decisions. An all-store buy is defined by one quantity, and a select store buy is quite often half the amount of the all-store buy quantity with very little deviation. This holds retailers back from fulfilling customer demand quickly. The inherent constraints limit buyers to a predetermined set of styles, ignoring their urgent need to be adaptive to trends. If an emerging trend doesn't fit the predefined buy, then the entire plan needs to be reworked. The wedge forces the retailer to plan the same assortment for all stores within a cluster, even though there could be a variation in customer preferences between stores. The result of this becomes a number of one-size-fits-all assortments, leaving stores destined to be under or overstocked and the retailer failing to realize the margin potential. A more effective method is to allow buyers to make decisions about how they envision each product being allocated and calculate buy units based on that forecast. They can further tailor assortments by using multiple dimensions of customer demand to target buys. A particular style may be most suitable for locations with high sales volumes, in warm climates, with a specific customer preference and styles. This type of buying requires the ability to constantly recalculate buy dollars and units to ensure merchandise plans are adhered to. Buy plans still must roll up to the company targets the same as the wedge. However, now buyers have more flexibility to adjust their buys to ensure inventory is appropriately matched to customer demand. Empowering the merchants to make best decisions about how to spend buy dollars, assortments can better match fashion trends, and using multiple dimensions of customer demand, they can match the product demand to every location within the organization. When using the wedge and clustering stores, they are typically defined at the total sales volume, regardless if the sales were primarily generated from denim jeans, t-shirts, handbags, or even vacuum cleaners. The grading for all products is the same in the store. When a buy is tailored, the process starts by acknowledging not all stores sell everything the same and begin grouping product categories or classes at the sales volume for the store. A store may be an A volume for denim jeans, and a C for t-shirts, D for handbags, and so forth. You may wonder, how do you define what products will perform best at the locations? That is accomplished by indexing. A baseline is established and stores are given an index of how much product they are likely to sell relative to the baseline and locations are then clustered on their indices. Spreadsheets were able to be used to support the wedge. However, they cannot manage all of the details required to mathematically calculate the buy quantities to tailor a buy. Technology must support this process and the mathematics behind the buys. Just imagine if you had three stores. Store A sells two times the average of store B, and store C sells half of what the average store sells. When looking at this at a high level, it's easy to manage in a spreadsheet. Store A would receive double of the average store, and store C would receive half. Now imagine you have 200 stores in two countries with different climates throughout the year that you're calculating the buy quantity required. Let's take it one step further. A style is bought in five colors and two of the colors are not being bought for your D volume stores in one of those countries as the customer demand does not warrant these colors. Now that portion of the buy needs to be removed from the total. Where do you even begin to update these calculations in a spreadsheet and capture this scenario with confidence knowing that the accuracy of the calculated buy quantity is correct. If that was for one style in a class, how would anyone be able to manage all the calculations in Excel for 200 stores in the multiple countries and still come up with the correct buy number? Only technology can assist with this type of detail. 